is the Bradleone and Lamson Santoku style Chinese cleaver big boy worth 80 bucks mm. let's talk about it hey guys um, before we get into the review here um, I want to talk about something pretty important as my channel continues to grow um, it's important to me that I use this platform that I'm developing for good and you know not just to teach and you know give people good information and entertainment and all that but to, but to help when I can a very dear friend of mine uh, Christine her cat Lucy has gotten pretty sick and um, is dealing with uh, some sort of cancer and needs some pretty serious surgery um, that involves uh, removing tumors and chemo and things like that. Um, this is something that I empathize with greatly. Not just because it's, you know, one of my friends in need, but because I'm a pet owner myself. And as much as I talk shit on the little fucker, if anything ever happened to him, I'd, I don't know what I'd ever do. So another friend of ours has been gracious enough to start a GoFundMe for her. And uh, I don't think I'd be using this platform properly unless I asked you guys to, you know, go check it out. Donate if you feel like you don't have to donate, but you know, if, if you got it in you, if you got a few extra bucks, throw some money your way so she can save her little cat. Um, I'll leave the link to that down in the description and we'll get going from there. All right, so let's talk about this knife. Um, this is the Brad Leone Signature Ch uh, Santoku style Chinese cleaver from Lamson. Um, and this was a, this was a very, my screen turned off. You know where I keep my notes. This is a very heavily requested knife. Um, and I'm going to start off before I get into my review and say that like, I'm, I, I'm not biased against Brad Leone. I'm actually a big fan of Brad Leone. So keep that in mind as I talk about this knife. Um, now, first off, we want to talk about our online impress. Oh, by the way, um, I couldn't find my voice recorder, uh, which is a problem because that thing's expensive. Um, so that's why there's this big old microphone here. This is my USB mic hooked up to my computer right off to the side here. Um, so hopefully this isn't the way and hopefully I actually sound really good right now. We'll see. But going into the uh, review or going into everything, I always like to check out the website and see what the website has to say and it gives you a good idea of what you're going to be looking for so one thing i noticed immediately is the handle is actually different than the regular uh cleavers of the same kind that they're selling well most of the handles have just kind of a chunky wooden handle here um, this one's actually tapered at the end and it's double riveted instead of triple riveted so you can kind of see right here where it tapers in and allows for a better grip now, additionally, um, we have a handle that is, or we have a knife that is U.S. made uh, using uh, 420HC steel. Now, 420HC, it's an, it's an okay steel. Um, it's not top of the line, top tier by any means. Um, and in fact, it is usually seen with outdoor knives. I know buck knives is really popular for using 420HC, um, machete, stuff like that. It's an outdoorsy steel type. You very rarely... Uh, see it in kitchen knives, at least to my to my experience. I have not seen many 420HC knives uh, in the kitchen. Uh, additionally, the knife is hardened to about 57, 58 Rockwell hardness, so it's a decently hard knife. It's below 60. It's not you know going to be Japanese tier, but it's going to hang with you know your standard German knives and things like that. And they have a lifetime warranty. The warranty does specify manufacturer defects, but it's there, it exists, so you're not, you know, screwed if you just buy the knife and it's messed up, which we're, we're gonna get into. And there's one other thing I looked up online. Um, you know, you go to like the, the Chef Knife subreddit and things like that. A lot of people talked about and posted about this knife. This thing has dismal reviews. Um, a lot of people have just talked about inconsistent quality, uh, poor grind, uh, poor out-of-box sharpness, and 
I had I had similar I had similar experiences with that. So we're gonna we're gonna hop into that here in a second. Now we unbox the knife. I don't think that the packaging of the knife is very important, but it's nice to have. And with this, this is the box that it was shipped in. And there was not another box inside this box. There was just like a little plastic tray that you pulled out and the knife was sitting there along with a little blue Lamson fiber cloth and this little piece of paper right here. There's, what are you doing, dude? Get out of stuff. So, on one hand, I don't think packaging is that important. On the other hand, I do. Um, good packaging shows that a, a maker stands behind their product. It shows that they're not just shoving it in a box and sending it to you. Again, it's not that important, but when you pay 80 bucks for, for a knife, you hope that the packaging inspires confidence and this packaging didn't but again that's that's neither here nor there you can get the best kitchen knife in the world and it could come just wrapped in bubble wrap and that's it but it's still the best knife in the world so that's not an indicator of the quality of the knife it's just something i want to point out when we talk about our first impressions when we unbox it um, i like the shape of the knife um, this is actually my first uh cleaver that i've really owned and tried out and i like it um you know, I like the big belly of the knife. It's really good for just like scoopy ingredients as you're chopping. Um, and it gives you a lot of room to play with, with your knuckle guide. I don't like low profile knives when I'm chopping because I like to have something that I can constantly keep in contact with my knuckle because it's gonna give me just better control as I'm cutting. So I like that a lot, especially it's got this little cutaway here that allows your fingers to kind of nestle in really nicely. So it is very comfortable to hold for the most part. Now, the the issue we come into here is it does feel kind of cheap. Um, not necessarily with the steel itself, but the handle, it's, it's just two pieces of wood, just riveted onto the metal, exposed tang right there at the end. Um, you can see that. But also, this wood doesn't feel polished. It doesn't feel finished. There's no sort of, you know, sealant on it that I can determine. It wasn't sanded down very well. It's It's got a rough texture to it. Um, to the point where I feel like if I get the knife wet and I'm not able to dry it immediately, the handle's fucked. Uh, more so, after it almost makes me think I'm going to get a splinter after a while using it. So that's a big issue for me. Um, but otherwise, it's not too bad just to like hold and use. It's fairly light as far as cleavers go, at least in my, in, as to my knowledge with it, because you know, bigger knife means heavier knife usually. But this thing stays pretty light at I think at 12 ounces. We get into my hands-on. I was not able to film at work this week. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to continue filming at work. Um, it's not really something I can get into. Uh, I'm not thrilled about it because I know that that helps show the actual knife in use, um, but I wasn't able to get footage of me actually using it at work. Now that said, I did use it for a few days. Um, and immediately, I didn't like it. Uh, my first thing that I prepped with it was mushrooms. And if you've cut mushrooms, you know that it doesn't take a whole lot to cut a mushroom. Within five minutes, I was feeling resistance going through mushrooms. At one point, I actually had a mushroom just like wedged onto the blade and I was just kind of lightly tapping it to see if it would just kind of fall in. And it wasn't until I actually like applied force that it cut through the mushroom. That's a fucking mushroom. That should never happen. So. The out of the blade, the out of the box sharpness of this knife is not good, at least for me. Five minutes in, I switched to a different knife because 
I was at work and I had to get my prep done. So I switched to, you know, one of my other knives that can actually handle the, handle the load. Um, and that, that was a, almost a death blow for this thing right away. But I still wanted to give it a fair chance. So that night I took it home and I sharpened it. You know, took it over a couple grits, got it to a really nice sharpness and brought it back the next day. And it cut stuff. It worked all right. Um, it didn't feel amazing to use. Um, you know, it performed adequate, adequately, but, you know, not remarkably. So, and I hate, cause you know, right here, I usually have a lot more stuff I can say based on everything I was doing with it. I cut a few things. I cut mushrooms, I cut bread. I think I trimmed down guanciale with it, a few things. None of it ever really, you know, wowed me as I was using it. Um, and again, and this was a problem that I had with the uh, Sam the Cooking Guy knife too. The spine of the knife, which is pretty thick, the edges, like these 90 degree edges where the spine goes down, are kind of rough. They're not smoothed out at all. Um, and that, again, did lead uh, to some digging into my hand, making it somewhat uncomfortable to use. So, it's just, it breaks my heart because, I, like I said, I'm a big fan of Brad Leone, but I, there are just so many little issues with this knife. You're not going to be able to see it uh, on these cameras, um, but I will see if I can get like a good like close-up shot. Um, the actual grind on the blade is uneven. And what I mean by that is you can see, if you look closely at your knife, you can always see where it's ground um, down into, you know, the point that makes it sharp. And as it goes down to the heel of the blade, that grind actually gets thinner. So it's an, not an evenly ground knife. So I don't love that I'm saying this because like I said, I'm a big fan of Brad Leone. Um, I can't, I can't recommend buying this knife. Not at $80. Um, you know, I, when it's dull out of the box and the handle doesn't feel finished and cheap and it has tons of imperfections and, you know, this low quality grind on it. The only way I could say that you should buy this knife is, you know, if you're a really big fan of Brad Leone and you want to support him, I'll always support um, buying creator merchandise to, you know, help them out. I'm a huge proponent of that. Or if you want just like a secondary, you know, like an outdoor, like a camping knife or something, I think this would be great for that. Um, I think that if you, if you understand how to sharpen knives and, you know, do a little work on the blade, maybe touch up the handle, I think this could be a really great knife. But the average person doesn't know how to do that and so they're just going to be stuck with a knife that is performing adequately at best, but not, nothing amazing. So, uh, you know, and I, I feel bad because I feel like I'm just shitting all over this knife because I wanted to like it. I still want to like it. And I feel like if I put some work into it, I could like it. But that's the problem. You're, you're buying what, to me at this point, feels like an unfinished product um, and an inconsistent product. And I know a lot of people are going to be mad on this one because there's a lot of great reviews of the knife, but there's a lot of bad ones too. And it comes down to quality control and inconsistency. And it's just something that I can't recommend unless you're getting great stuff across the board. So no, it has not earned a spot in my knife bag, but... I don't know, maybe at some point I'll uh, be able to get a hold of the his custom knife, the Fell Knives version of the big boy, which is the $500 granddaddy version of this. I hope you guys aren't too mad at me on this one. I know this, uh, especially the, the lack of uh, B-roll, I'm going to see what I can shoehorn in here. But uh, yeah, that's my thoughts on this one. Now, that being said... I do want to remind everybody, 
Uh, the contest to win uh, one of three Binging with Babish Knives is still going on until uh, August 22nd. Um, as always, the link for that will be in the description below. And I'm coming back to Twitch soon. Um, I started streaming about, about a year ago. Stopped streaming about six months ago so I could focus on building my YouTube. Uh, I built it up pretty well, and I'm ready to start streaming again. So, you can follow me on twitch.tv slash launchpadcooks. I don't know what day I'll be coming back. It will hopefully be before the end of the month. I'm fucking busy all the time, but I'm trying to make room for it soon. Um, also, my Discord is now open for business. A Discord, that's another thing I've had for a while. I haven't been promoting it in my last few videos because I wanted to get it uh, organized and set up, get some new mods going and everything like that. It's all set up, so if you want to hang out with me, chill out, talk about cooking, gear, other stuff like gaming, drop some memes, you know, all the standard Discord stuff, but with a cooking influence to it, uh, you can check that out. And of course, my Patreon. Uh, you guys know I have a Patreon. Um, actually, you know what? No. Um, if you watch this video and you decide from it that you're going to subscribe to my Patreon, I want you to click that GoFundMe link instead, and I want you to put that money there. I'll get by, but help my friend out. Then later on, if you're still feeling generous, you can come, you know, subscribe to my Patreon, but help my friend out first. Other than that, you know the drill. All those buttons that make YouTube like me. I'll see you guys soon. Love you.